Hi, Greg here. The sun has set on 2022 and has risen on 2023. And it's that time of year where I usually put together a series of my favorite images from the past year. Now, this is the first time I've done it in a video. Uh, I usually do a video slideshow type of thing and put it on YouTube. But this time I'm actually going to talk about my favorite 10 of 2022. So starting at number 10 is a photo that I took during the first big blast of snow we had about five weeks ago. Um, this scene is a gazebo or some people call it a band shell at our local park and when the snow had finally stopped falling my wife and I took a drive around to see the just the, the beautiful um, scenery that you get when you have a fresh snowfall. Now we got about three feet of snow in the matter of about 36 hours. And when I saw this, I'll call it a band shell because that's basically what it is. When I saw this band shell with the lights on in amongst the trees, these pine trees are, are massive for this area. Uh, the, who knows how old they are, but these, uh, you know, the, the trees surrounded this, this band shell with the lights on and with all the snow, it just made for a, a nice, beautiful scene, almost like a, a postcard. And um, I couldn't help but, but snap this with my iPhone 14 Pro Max. And uh, I used the um, 77 millimeter telephoto because I really love that focal length. And um, uh, not much else to say about the image other than I, I do like the fact that there were no footprints through the snow. Everything was just so fresh. And, uh, you know, it, it almost could have been higher in my top 10 list, but there's just some that I, I like better. So this is, this is number 10 in my top 10 list. Next is a scene from the fall. Autumn is my absolute favorite time of year to do photography. And it's no surprise that there's probably half of these top 10, if not more, are taken in the autumn. Uh, this particular scene was taken from a bridge in town here. Um, you could take a picture off either side of this bridge and come up with a really nice scene. And the fact, I've, I've done just that almost every fall. Um, this house is embedded in amongst all these trees. There's so many different species of trees. That's why there's so many different colors. And the sky was overcast and the, the, the water was so still, it made for some great reflections. And the, the, there's just, uh, there's no way I could drive by this bridge without stopping to get this photo. Um, I did some extra saturation on it. Uh, again, this was with my iPhone 14 Pro Max and the 77 millimeter lens again, uh, which kind of lends itself to a little softer image than with the, say, with the main camera, because it just doesn't have the same stabilization that the other camera has to offer. But I, I, I had cropped in a fair bit on this one too, because there was, um, you know, a lot of sky on the top of the frame, which reflected in the water at the bottom of the frame. But I wanted to eliminate that to just show off the beautiful colors, the reflections, and and that you know the house itself that's sitting in amongst the uh, the trees. My third image is from a drive that we took during autumn, of course. Uh, there's. We, we live in an area where the Niagara Escarpment goes through a lot of this, um, this region and it really makes for some wonderful photography, especially in the autumn, because there's a lot of trees at the top of the escarpment. Then you have the cliffs and then more trees at the bottom offering lots of splendid color. Uh, this was borderline on the, uh, you know, getting past the prime colors for the season but there was still lots of color left. And when we, when we drove by, we saw these cows in this field 
And when I stopped the car, they didn't seem to mind us getting close to them. So I got out of the car, I walked up towards the fence. There was a bit of a ditch there, so I couldn't get any closer. But uh, this one particular cow, it, it just, something about it just caught my eye. And if you look closely, you can see the horn growing out of the top of the head and it curves down and goes towards the side of the head. And I have to wonder if, you know, if that is gonna start growing into the skull of the cow or what's gonna happen there. But I thought it was interesting, you know, it, it didn't seem to mind me there taking its photo. And, you know, with the, with the rail fence, you could see the glow from the color of the leaves reflecting down onto the fence, giving it a kind of a yellowish cast. And it, it was just a, a nice quiet scene. There was hardly any traffic. Uh, the cows didn't seem to mind getting their photo taken. And uh, that is number eight on my list. This next image goes back as far as January of 2022, January 18th, in fact. It was a very, very cold day. Uh, where we stopped to take a few of these pictures, it, it was minus 20 something, I think, or almost minus 20 degrees Celsius. So it was freezing. And I didn't get a chance to get too many photos that day. But this caught my eye because the, uh, 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 obviously my 12 Pro Max again. And what caught my eye about this scene was the light from the sun reflecting on the ice, uh, just on, you know, it was just catching the, the, the parts of the ice to, to show the texture of the image. Um, you know, a somewhat overcast day, but there was a little bit of sun coming through the clouds. And not to, the sun wasn't clearly shining on this scene at the time, but it was, you know, just that kind of day where it was a hazy overcast day, but you could see the sun kind of shining through the clouds. And the wood structure of this particular scene looks like it may have been from an old dock. Uh, if I was to, to show you a, a picture of this in the summertime, which I have taken, all you would see is these like wooden posts sticking out of the water. And, um, you know, when they got covered with the ice and, and, and a little bit of a, uh, you know, there's a little skiff of snow there. Uh, it just, uh, you know, caught my eye and, and then the way the, uh, the ice is fragmented in behind and that goes right out into the bay that way. So, um, you know, there's opportunity for a lot of patterns and such there. So this was number seven on my list. There's a fence in my neighborhood where when I walk the dog, I go by this fence every day and there's vines and things growing on this, on this fence. Um, a couple of years ago, the homeowner trimmed everything down and all you could see was these wooden branches that uh, kind of intertwined themselves through the, the borders of the fence. But when I took this photo back in the fall of 2022 here, uh, the leaves had grown back over the summer and when they turned a beautiful yellow color, they just looked like a bunch of little yellow hearts hanging off the fence. What I like about this image is that the camera was able to pick up the detail in the boards on the back side of the fence. So, you know, that's something that the iPhone is really good at is, is um, uh, a lot of exposure latitude and it picks up the, the details in the shadows very well. And basically, I just love the way you, the color of the leaves um, contrasted with the color of the, of the wood on the fence and it's very faded gray looking wood and uh, again overcast day so nice soft even lighting and uh, this was number six on my list. Number five brings me back to the cows again. I couldn't help but use the panel feature to get this shot because it was such an expansive field and the cows were scattered throughout and I wanted to really showcase the length of the escarpment, how it goes across the horizon. And with the trees that were hanging low in the foreground, I thought it just made for a really nice image. And the, uh, the cows weren't moving. So that really helps with the panel when you're scanning the phone across the scene. There would be no doubling of their legs or anything if they happened to be taking a step. 
and everything just looks so natural. The colors look so true to life. And again, with so many different species of trees in that forest, the colors, even though they are, you know, like I said before, going past their prime, you could still see that there could be the potential. If I got here a week earlier, the, the colors in the, in the forest would have been um, much more vibrant, but I'm still happy with the way it turned out because with the sunshine, uh, all the golden hues of the, of the odd of colors, with the blue sky in behind, it just made for a wonderful scene that I couldn't pass up. This next image was taken on the same day as the photo from the river where the sky was completely overcast. This was earlier in the day when we had made a trip up to a place called Skinner's Bluff. It's a very, very popular lookout and you can see that there are a lot more brilliant colors in this scene. Uh, I guess obviously a different species of trees throughout this part of the forest. To the right you can see the escarpment as it heads north towards Owen Sound where, where I live and the rock in the foreground juts out from the escarpment. Of course we're standing right on the escarpment. It has so many places where it curves around the landscape and this particular rock sticks out. It's a very popular photo spot. You can walk out close to the edge. I wouldn't recommend getting too close to the edge though because it's about, I'd say, a hundred foot drop or maybe more, it's hard to tell. But it's a great vantage point and I really like the way the clouds were all creating these leading lines going towards the center of the frame. Out in the bay you can see one of the three islands that are in that area and I really like the way the clouds cast a shadow over the area. That was forever changing because the clouds were moving somewhat quickly and it just dappled the landscape at times. So this is number four on my list. You won't see many sunrise images from me because I'm not an early riser, but I do work nights at times and when I get off work in the morning and the sun is just right, I will take a drive around before I go home and see what I can capture. On this particular day, there was a mist coming up from the ground and I don't know what caused it, whether it was the difference in temperature from the, uh, the dew on the, on the grass and, and on the ground, uh, and then when the sun hit it, it created this mist. I'm not sure what it was, but it was a lot of fun to go around and capture a bunch of images as the sun, still very low in the horizon, would hit the trees and cast these shadows across the landscape. The grasses in the fields all looked a beautiful golden color as this was just before the autumn season. And I had taken quite a few images that day, but this was the one that made the list for sure. So now we're down to the final two and it was a very tough decision on, on how to order these two because this has been probably my most popular image on social media throughout 2022 and it's the only image that I actually entered into a contest uh, in the uh, iPhone Photography Awards and of course I didn't place anything with it but I mean it was it was so worthy of the entry that I couldn't help but put it in. Now the story behind this is that this fellow had been growing his hair and his beard since COVID started and I call the image Resistance because he was resisting the urge to shave or get his hair cut. At least that's what I perceived it as. And I told him I wanted to get a portrait of him before he shaved it off and cut his hair. So since he was going to be retiring, we got together at work and we took a few minutes to take a few pictures. And when I took this shot, I did it in portrait mode on my iPhone 12 Pro Max and I wanted to give it kind of the dragon effect. There's a, there's a, an editing pr process called the dragon effect and it really, th this isn't that close to it, but it's, it, it kind of, uh, uh, it, it shows off the strands of hair and the beard and whatnot, which is what the dragon effect does. It's like a, it's like a high contrast uh, effect 
and you can do them in color, but I chose to do this in black and white because the color in the image just didn't really suit my vision for a final outcome. And since I don't do many portraits, I really was happy the way this turned out. And it makes me a lot less afraid to do portraiture again, but the subject has to be just right. And now for my favorite image of 2022. The reason I chose this as my favorite is because it's the first one I took with my iPhone 14 Pro Max with a 48 megapixel sensor. It just shows so much detail. We were on our way home from walking the dog in the park and with the way that sunset was looking, I knew I had to stop somewhere and get a shot. So I drove into a little area along this river. This river goes right to the park that we were just at and I knew that the, these trees would be right below the sunset. So when we got there, the sun had just gone down below the horizon and I was really happy to see that I could still see the reflection in the water. And with the way the, the, the leaves and the, the, the grasses were kind of growing up underneath the water and hitting the surface, it broke up the surface of the water so nicely. And I think it's better than having a perfectly smooth reflection. It gives it a sense of texture, even though it was smooth, very smooth. You can just barely see some ripples in the water. The current was moving very slow and I was able to bring out the contrast of the sky and the clouds in the reflection and I gave it just enough saturation to make it look realistic. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this trip through my year, 2022. Uh, I had a short list of about 19 images, and these were the top 10. And now, here are the honorable mentions. Now I should mention that I find these videos a little intimidating to make. I'm not used to talking to a camera and I know they will get better over time. So stay tuned to the channel. I do have some macro videos in mind. Uh, I'm working on one as we speak and I'm not sure when it'll be out, but uh, I wanted to get this one out because we're into the new year now and I do like to showcase my best images from the year before. and. Thanks for coming along for the ride, and I'll see you on the next one.